Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of GRG Talks. This is a good one. I'm very excited about this. We, uh, we're going to talk about uh, kind of our wheelhouse a little bit. I'm joined by uh, Green Realty agent Matt Guile. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Matt. Thank you, guys. Yeah, this is and great. off camera is our marketing director, Joshua Heath. Joshua, thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about marketing. But we're talking about specifically uh, photo and video because this is a new, this is a, I guess a new, I don't even know if qualified, qualified is new anymore. It's been something that's been around for a while, but it's definitely changing. Yeah. I think um, I first kind of came across photo and a little bit of video marketing um, in a previous role uh, with a with a standalone uh, production company and we would do a handful of one-off um, photo shoots and some video projects and this goes back to 2012 2013 um, but really the price point that we were charging for our time didn't line up with the um, uh, with the agents or with yeah. the listings and so it was really kind of before its time um, trying to break into that model um, of really putting a, a presentation first, um, you know, in terms of quality yeah. photos and, and some video. And then um, then the MLS um, and the services that were provided to the agents um, in that time period didn't really support a way to market those in the best way possible. Um, maybe more so for photos, but definitely not for, for video. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so then it was, um, you know, using YouTube or other um, places to upload, but how do you drive your traffic to those right. um, resources? And so it just, uh, it wasn't until you, 2000, maybe 16, as you saw a real um, big shift. And then, um, you know, honestly, um, during the pandemic in 2020, you saw another real, a deep dive into it. Um, and a lot of growth in between those periods, but um, as as the pandemic limited our face to face contact, right? Um, you saw a the MLS shift um, and the supporting sites really shift and deep dive. Yeah, you into, had to present your home in a different way um, into the marketing materials and right. how to showcase that. Right, Matt. Uh, no, I don't know that. Uh, well, certainly the seventy seven viewers that we have for the uh, for these podcasts don't know this, but you actually your background. Uh, here at Green Realty started in sort of the marketing. Department. Yeah, yeah. So um, some, again, for some previous jobs and experiences in, in marketing and small business, specifically photo and video, um, was used. And um, um, I took the position as the marketing director in 2016 here at Green and um, did that right up until um, January of 2020. Mm -hmm. And at that point, pivoted into a, a broker role here at the office. <coughs> And um, you hit on a little bit of the of the changes, but uh, we were kind of talking uh, as we were prepping for the podcast that it's not just sort of general feelings and vibes and strategies. There's actually some actual stats out there that showcase how much things have changed. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, well, there's a few different um, ideas or uh, philosophies um, that go into real estate marketing. And one is who, who are you, who is your demographic? And sometimes that demographic is a buyer that you're trying to get into the home. Other times it's to, um, to uh, other potential clients, um, trying to showcase consistency in marketing and what you do for listings um, and how you approach real estate as a, an agent. Um, and then even more so, it can be a platform for the brokerage to utilize to show the resources that they present for their agents as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so um, these materials kind of they're multifaceted, I would yeah. say. Yeah. And, um, and where they, how they are presented on each of the maybe syndicated sites, whether it's the MLS or what we push out to the Zillows and Redfin's and other websites, real estate websites, um, versus what we present on social media, all of those um, assets presented in a different way are going towards are going towards different demographics. Yeah, yeah. Um, how much 
kind of getting into that, how much has it changed uh, and since you've kind of gotten into this line of work? Um, we know the pandemic changed a lot, but it was already starting to change a little bit before then. Now it's full on. It feels like it changes every day. How? What, what are some of the things you've noticed? Yeah, so um, I think so you can you can kind of follow it as uh, technology has changed a little bit. So um, in the, let's say, the early 2010s, um, consumer cameras, cameras were getting a lot better for a lot cheaper. And so um, a resource that real estate agents would provide was, I have a good camera and I will take my listing photos myself. And agents started to pride themselves on their ability to take photos. Um, as then you kind of started to see um, what uh, quality and maybe less so in quality. Uh, you could like. start to compare and contrast. Yes, a little bit. and um, and so again, like in that 2015, you know, 16, 17, um, that role of the real estate photographer, and they, there's been real estate photographers well before then. Um, but I would have, would say that period of time, the mid 2010s really set that, um, that change. And, um, and then you had, um, different techniques in real estate photography kind of showcase, um, whether it's the HDR and stacking or use of lights and, and right. fusion. Um, and so there's a, a a separation of techniques that really showcased homes in, in different ways um, and and really kind of set that role as an important role um, for uh, for real estate agents. Um, then you also shifted at that time as uh, video um, production started, the technology changed, um, quality got a little bit um, for good quality, it got a little bit cheaper, mm -hmm. and you were able to um, produce things fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and as well as MLS and some of these sites changing to support them. Um, so you got that idea of um, the one second or the one minute, um, yeah, one minute. Uh, video tours of homes or um, a talking head video where you're walking through a home with an agent right and that these actually had value because it one sold the agent but also two gave um, potential buyers a little more flow to the home and mm -hmm. um, a quick like they the could art, imagine themselves yeah and their attention span wasn't I didn't need um, um, many minutes i was able to see this in in a, in a short period of time see mm -hmm. a lot of information yeah. uh i have a question for both of you so now we're going to include joshua in on this conversation as well um and it's about sort of the types of photos and videos and the reason why i want to include josh in on this is because something that uh josh has discovered as the marketing director is um how these videos transfer to social media so when you get uh when you get a photographer out to your property They'll take these beautiful shots. I mean, now we have drones that they're able to use. You know, that's not something that we saw shoot even like really, I would imagine, like 10 years ago even. Um, all these sweeping, beautiful shots, they come out with this beautifully produced video that's perfect for a website. But one thing, Josh, Joshua, you've discovered is that um, it, like it doesn't necessarily always translate to social media. Can you talk about some of the, the way the videos are used on social media? Well, I mean, yeah. It used to be that every platform had its own, you know, aspect ratio, and now everything is in that vertical aspect ratio. So you kind of have to shoot it differently now. You have to either have to center it, or you have to, you know, um, film it vertically. Yeah. And so, you know, how you're viewing the home, like you want to see more on a screen, and so you have to, you know, take advantage of that vertical. People are viewing videos, you know, vertically instead of horizontal. So yeah. just knowing that when you're shooting it. And also when you're editing it. I think that's a great point because I think everybody consumes everything on their phones now. And so you have to kind of be aware of that. So even that's a change we'll start to see a little bit. Yeah. Well, and I think that um, definitely picked up in the 2000 or in the during the pandemic um, where you had agents walking around with their phone doing tours um, and, you know, remote clients a lot more. People were moving differently. So with remote work, now you can... I need to see a home and I'm in, you know, California, I want to move to Washington. 
now um, I'm not flying up immediately. I want to do some some virtual tours. Yeah. And so um, definitely uh, how things are shot um, is it has changed over time, and and again the purpose for that um, has kind of adjusted. Yeah. Um, and and then going back to kind of the the difference in photography and even video to some extent you know the you have your wide shots so you'll shoot a room to um, get the idea of flow and how you move about it and then you'll get tighter shots that work through um, features or more detail oriented um, unique elements of the home that may be the selling point um, there's some interesting studies um, that have been done um, over the past maybe 20 years or so. Um, let's going back into the early 2000s. Um, there was a, a study done that said it it took about seven to ten photos to attract a buyer to tour a home. Yeah, and and we have um, you know uh, space to utilize 25 to 40 photos um, for mm -hmm. any listing um, plus video and extra other materials um, the more current study showing the past you know five years or so um, has increased that number to 15 to 20 um, images is kind of the sweet spot for attracting a buyer to a home um, that being said you know there's potential that more photos can be beneficial but there's also potential that somebody sees something they don't like and they choose not to tour the home because of additional photos. Yeah. So it is kind of this psychological game of where what I'm what I'm showcasing right. not to deceive, but the goal is to attract somebody into the home. Yeah. Yeah, you want to showcase you want to put the the home's best foot forward. Yeah. So 17 photos and and seven of them being horrible. <laughs> doesn't do you any good, yeah. right? I mean, you still have to make sure you got you have high quality. Speaking of quality, uh, what, in your opinion, having done this work for for a while, makes a photo good? Oh, what makes a photo good? That's a <laughs> that's a um, deep one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I it's mean, probably lighting. Yeah, yeah probably lighting. starts with lighting, right? Yeah. I think balanced lighting. Um, oh, and this, I'm, I. Not to give a long-winded answer f um, to this question, but again, there are um, there's a wide range of possible answers to mm -hmm. this question. So, yeah. um, in one element, for I would say for listing photos, attracting a buyer to the home um, is a well-balanced. So your light and shadows are well-balanced across the photo. Um, that there is. Uh, um, utilization of natural light so you're mm -hmm. it, um, you don't it doesn't come across um, fake yeah and then um, and and then a good uh, relation of space so you're not shooting too wide that it feels distorted or the space looks unnaturally large mm -hmm. um, but that you're not just showcasing um, a small detail so that uh, a, a decently wide photo that's well lit I yeah. think is the best um, is a, it makes a real estate photo um, quality mm -hmm. that being said you can get into architectural style shooting where you may um, like the windows might be blown out a little bit and you're not balancing light as specifically from indoor to outdoor and you're getting more um, focused light inside. Right. Um, you'll see this in a lot of magazine shoots or huh. um, furniture um, and decor. Yeah. So f more focused light um, into spaces. Yeah. Um, and then you can talk about like um, even more so into like features or like cabinetry and finish work photos. Um, you're going to be uh, slightly more shallow depth of field, focusing on the elements that you're really trying to showcase, mm -hmm. um, and so it gets even, you know, it gets even weirder. Though the answer can get more long-winded, but for a good real estate photo, I would say that that mid wide angle and well lit is yeah. the, is what you're trying to get to. How do you guys feel about uh, about digital staging? So this is a new f sort of phenomenon where you take an empty room and the photographer does their magic and they end up having a beautiful couch in there and, and, a, and a coffee table. 
Um, there, you know, we've seen some that look great, and we've seen some that look really not overly digital staged, but certainly, you know, not as natural as having furniture in there. How do you guys feel about digital staging? I mean, if you do it well, it's nice. You also have to do match the style of the home. Mm, that helps. Good point. And then also get the shadows um, to make it look. Yeah. So if it's done well with the correct shadows, it can be good. And then also just trying to match. If you try to put modern furniture in like a traditional home, it looks weird. Right. So you have to, you have to know style. You can't just be like, I'm just going to put furniture because I like the look. But yeah. you have to match the home. Yeah. And that, that makes it look more natural to the... Like that's the type of people that are buying this house are going to have this type of furniture, so make it match. That's you know, a really good point. choose a neutral style. Yeah, that's a really good point. Well, um, I was actually I was talking to a stager yesterday about this exact um, thought yeah. and this and um, and one of a few of the things that she brought up that I, I really agree with was um, we tend to see spaces maybe overstaged more often when it's virtually staged than um, in person. Oh, okay. Um, and then um, there is something to be said about seeing what you, um, being more attracted to seeing something, what you see in, in the photos to mm -hmm. what you see in person. So being able to see that furniture um, in, in At, the room. Literally in the room. The home. Right. Um, now I think it does, it definitely has a, a place is is definitely a valuable tool um, because it's not, maybe it's not always um, uh, reasonable to stage um, different homes that it, it may be worthwhile to stay virtually stage a home um, versus do it um, right. in person. But it, uh, I think there's value on both sides done correctly. Interesting. Interesting. So it kind of might, might depend on the situation. And yeah, yeah, that's pretty like a buyer could respond differently to a digitally staged home. That's really interesting. Uh, as we kind of uh, close out here, this this one, um, this is a really I find all of this stuff really interesting and not just because I'm a marketing person. But um, so we'll definitely come back, uh, Matt, if you're willing to. We'll talk about social media and all that stuff. But as we wrap up today's, um, I think, Josh, you, Joshua, you were the one who who wrote this down. And I really like uh, the I really like the wording on this. Are we trying to inspire uh, or show the home? Can you talk a little bit about what, what that means to you? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, like, you know, you have a home to a video or photos, and those are targeting bias, and they want to see the home. But also, like, if you're posting on social, your audience is wider than just bias. And so if you can just inspire, like, either a current home owner, be like, I like that style, or I like how that house looks, so I want to do a home upgrade or whatever, and then maybe that leads them to sell the home later on. So, like, you're trying to inspire, whether it's design trends, whether it's furniture. So, you know, how you're invoking that emotion, too. Um, and then, again, with video, too, with digital staging, is not really what works with video. And right. so that's another reason why the downside not to go too much on, on a tangent but yeah um attention spans too you know again yeah good point so like you want to like if you show the home at the home to if it's a big home it's gonna be a long video very slow moving through the house yes. plus it's like let's throw some highlights up there keep it fast pace right you know get their attention inspire them give them a few ideas that spark some interest and then like that makes them want to like maybe either sh see the house if they're a buyer yeah. or share it. Yeah. If they like love the house, even though they're not interested, they might share it anyway because they love the house. Right. So you try to make make it look good that way. Tell the story of the home. Yep. Basically, and yep. then try and you know try to entice a buyer who could see themselves in that story. Yeah. Basically. Oh, get them to share it. Yeah. So. Uh, Matt, as we as we as we finish up here, uh, can you talk? Can you uh, talk a little bit about some some sort of final things that. Both honestly, this this podcast it would be really good for agents, I think, as well, uh, for buy for for sellers and agents to keep in mind uh, as they start to think about these these uh, different ways of presenting the home. You got anything else you want to share with folks? Yeah, well, I think um, the biggest thing is that it's always a learning experience. That um, one, you know, here in in our office, being able to utilize you guys as a resource who are staying up to date on trends on the social media on the um, technologies um, and seeing who's doing it well and maybe who's 
um, who's not doing it as well mm -hmm. and being able to guide us to the resources um, to to best present it for ourselves as agents. I think that's huge. That's a, a, an immense resource. Um, and then for us as agents to go back to that inspire and showcase, you know, kind of, the, I can't say it any better than that, but to utilize the assets that we get from the work that we've done and the stories that we have worked through and you utilize that, to share that with, um, with the community because mm -hmm. then that showcases our knowledge um, as a as an agent um, and so taking the assets that we've we work with and knowing how to utilize them to as, as pieces to inspire for future maybe listing for future buyers as well as how to use them to best showcase our listing or ourselves as agents yeah. and be able to Humans, like, again, like, humans are naturally emotional people, and they are drawn to a story, they want to see that, and so, like, we start giving me the highlights of the stats of the home, like, here's the front of the house, here's, like, the bathroom count, and here's, like, here's the way, like, stats given, yeah. like, that shows bias, but, like, if you want to appeal to that emotional one, right. people are just naturally drawn to, like, a story, yeah. um, so that's why you can sit through a three-hour movie at a the movie right. theater, but you can't watch a 30 second <laughs> like not yeah. a portal show or a, just a two of a home it's yeah just, you know how do you get that emotion right you're so. you're more connected yeah, yeah that's 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 a really really yeah. great point oh this is fun this is a phenomenal subject i could talk about this subject all day but we actually do have work to do and we have to allow matt to get back to his job as well uh matt i want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast josh i want to thank yeah. you for appearing for the first time Hopefully we can do this again. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks.